Now that we've gotten some of those preliminaries out of the way, we'll finally get into the verbs of data science. If you still don't fully grasp pipes yet, that's totally fine. We'll come back to them in each of the examples uh, going forward. So feel free to follow along and see if they make sense later in this lecture. We'll be covering several verbs of data science, starting with select, which involves the selection of columns based on a column name, subsetting, which involves the selection of rows either based on criteria, uh, which uses the filter function, or based on a specific row number, which uses the slice function. Uh, we'll talk about mutate, which is a way of recoding a variable or defining a new variable in an existing data set. We'll talk about summarize, which is the function that you use to summarize several rows worth of data down to a single row. For example, when you want to calculate a mean or a median. We'll talk about grouping, which uh, is something that you, you can use alongside mutate or summarize to do some pretty powerful things. And then we'll talk about arrange, which is how you sort data based on specific columns. I'll mention that joining is another uh, verb that we'll get into in week three, but we won't cover it today. Uh, and joining basically involves taking two data sets and merging them uh, based on certain identifiers that are in each of the data sets. For these examples, we'll start with a data frame patience which I'm going to show to you here, and we'll run different operations on them to try to answer different analytical questions. So probably the simplest analytical question we can have, um, or thing that we might want to do to a data frame, is to only look at specific columns. And so if this is the data frame patients, and what we actually want to get out is just the ID column and the age column, how would we go about doing that? If you have your RStudio cheat open, I recommend going to, uh, you know, looking through the different functions. And if you look carefully, what you'll see is that there is a function called select, where the first argument is the data frame, and then any other arguments, which I think on the sheet, cheat sheet are listed as just dot, 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 is where you'd put any column names that you actually want to select. So even though, you know, we know that Patience is the first argument for select. We know from our experience piping that this is really just the same as writing patience, then select ID comma age. So whether we supply patience as the first argument directly, as is, is what we did in the uh, uh, first example here, it's the same as saying uh, patience pipe select ID comma age because patience gets inserted into the first argument of select. And this second line of code is actually a little bit easier to read uh, for me, because the way you're actually reading this out loud is start with patience, and then select the ID and age columns. Let's say you wanted to select the columns sex, disease, and age. Just the same way that we did in the previous example, we could have said patience then select sex, disease, and, uh, and age separated by commas, such that we would get this output. But another way of doing that is actually uh, separating sex and age with a colon, which just tells it to select all of the columns between sex and age, inclusive of sex and age. So if you were to write patients pipe or patients then select sex through age, what the colon is just doing is referring to all the columns that are between sex and age and selecting all of them. Now let's say you wanted to select all columns that have the letter A in the column name. It's a little bit of an artificial example, but this kind of thing will happen fairly commonly where you have a specific structure or a specific type of name given to certain columns and you only want to select those columns. So how would we actually go from the original data frame patients to a data frame that selects disease and age, which are the two columns that have the letter A in it. If you're looking at your RStudio data manipulation cheat sheet for dplyr, what you should look for is helper functions within select that will help you uh, extract 
specific patterns of column names. And the specific helper function that I'm going to use here is contains. And so again, the way that I would read this is patients then select any column that contains the letter A. And contains is a helper function for select. It can really only be used inside of a select function. Um, although there are some minor exceptions to this that we'll get into in week three, where you can use it in certain other contexts where it can be very helpful. Um, and again, I don't expect you to use it in this exact way, but there will definitely be times where you want to uh, extract columns based on the column name, and this is how you would go about doing it. Filtering is when you select specific rows or you filter certain rows based on criteria being met. So let's say you started with this data frame and you only wanted to consider people who had diabetes and return all of the columns for those people so that you get something like this. So all the columns are preserved, but the only two people that you got back were patients two and three who have diabetes. Uh, how do we go about doing that? So we could use the filter function which is a way that you can specify criteria for only getting back certain rows. So patients then filter disease equal equal diabetes is a way of saying that you want to filter in only those cases where the disease is equal to diabetes. And recall here that the two equal signs is a question. So it's going to return true or false. And every row where it returns true will get returned. So any row where disease actually is equal to diabetes uh, that row will, will, come, will evaluate to true, and so you'll actually get that value back uh, as the full row. If you were to do disease equals with a single equal sign here, you would get an, either an error or unexpected results. Well, from last week, you might remember that when we refer to columns, we typically had to add the data frame and, the, and a dollar sign after it. So don't we need to use patient's dollar sign disease here to refer to the disease column? How are we able to just write disease? There's no object in our R environment in R Studio. if you look in the top right panel, that's called disease. So how was I able to do this? The reason this works is because dplyr and many of the tidyverse packages assume that any function where you're working with a data frame, any variable name that you supply, it first checks the data frame to see if that variable name exists within that before checking your R environment to see if you've defined it separately. So here, what it effectively did was it first looked in the patient's data frame to see whether there is a column called disease. Uh, if it didn't find it, then it would look for a vector that you've defined called disease uh, that lives outside of the patient's data frame. But the nice thing here is that uh, typically what we want is to evaluate criteria based on column names. And when you use dplyr and tidyverse functions, you don't have to always specify the data frame as long as you your pipe starts with that data frame. Let's say we wanted to filter the data frame patients for only those patients who have diabetes and also who have an age greater than 65. So if you take a look at this data frame, only patient number two meets those criteria. And indeed, that's the result that we want to get back. The way we would do this is very similar to what we did before, with the main difference being that we would add an ampersand sign uh, with age greater than 65 to indicate that we want to filter only those rows in where both criteria are met. Importantly, there is a double ampersand uh, function in R, but we'll primarily be using a single ampersand function. If you use the double ampersand function where it's and and, you'll actually get an incorrect result. So just file that away that you always wanna use only a single uh, ampersand if you're talking about and. And again, the way you would read this out loud is start with patients, then filter in only those cases where disease equals equals diabetes and age is greater than 65. If you only wanted people who had diabetes or were over 65, you would just change the and uh, or ampersand function here out with a pipe function, which is a way of saying or uh, in R. 
If you're wondering where a list of this, these functions can be found, if you look on the RStudio data manipulation cheat sheet, you'll see different examples of the, all the functions that can be used here. But I wanted to just share those here so that you're aware of kind of the common functions that we use for saying and and or. If you're coming from certain other languages where you write out the letters A and D or OR, this might be a little bit confusing, but these are the common ones that you'll want to just remember uh, or write down. And if we wanted to know which patients in our data set don't have diabetes, uh, then we could use not equals, which is literally exclamation point equals. And the way this is read out is patients then filter in only those rows where the disease is not diabetes. Now that we've learned about filter and select, I wanted to show you that you actually can use these functions uh, in the same pipe together instead of just using them separately. So let's say you wanted to know which patients are over 40 and then select just the disease column for those patients. What should we expect to get back? So looking at this, three of the four patients are over 40. The only patient that's not over 40 is patient with ID3. Uh, and so what we should get back if we just select the disease column is hypertension, diabetes, and then depression. Because that second diabetes case should be excluded. And so just as we expected, we, get, we want to get back hypertension, diabetes, and depression. So the way we would do that is just the way we talked about when we were describing what we want to do. We want to start with patients. Uh, filter in only those patients who have an age greater than 40 and then select just the disease column. And all I mean by the fact that duplicates are allowed here is that if two patients had the same disease, but were both over 40, that disease would show up uh, twice as two separate rows. In this case, the two patients who had diabetes, only one of them was greater than 40. And so there actually weren't any duplicates in the output. So now that you see we've combine the filter fu uh, function with the select function in a series of pipes. This was fairly readable and explainable. How would this code have looked if we hadn't used pipes? Here's actually how it would have looked. Select filter patients age greater than 40 comma disease. And as you can see, this is actually much harder to read and make sense of because you have to start on the inside and work your way out. And this is the precise reason why we use pipes in dplyr and many of the tidyverse packages. So in our last example, we used a filter function first in order to define criteria. And then we used the select function to extract just the disease column. What if we actually reverse those? So let's say instead of uh, running filter first and then select, Let's say we said select disease and then filter age greater than 40. What do you think would happen? So actually, this wouldn't work. And the reason it wouldn't work is because if you select the disease column, there is no age column left. And so if you go to filter based on age, uh, you'll get an error because there is no age column. So importantly, any logic that you define based on a filter or a related type of function, uh, the variables that you want to use have to be in the piped data set at the time that you want to use them. So while filtering first and then selecting a column worked, selecting a column first and filtering based on a column that you excluded actually won't work. There are times where you know the specific row numbers that you want the data back for. Uh, and you don't really care about the logic, but you just want those specific rows back. And so if you knew that you wanted just the first row and the third row from this data set uh, to be returned, you wouldn't have to necessarily define a filter. You could just use the slice function uh, to get the first and third row. And so what the output would look like is all of the columns would come back, uh, except only the first and the third row would come back. 
So this is how you would do it using the slice function. You would give a slice a vector with the rows that you want back. And so in this case, start with patience and then slice the first and third row would give you back the output that you expect. When you use the slice function, what's really happening behind the scenes is that uh, it's using a special uh, type of filter where it's filtering based on the row number. Row number or row underscore number is a helper function uh, that comes as part of dplyr. And so when you use the slice function, it's really saying, give me back any uh, row number where a row number has a value um, within that vector of row numbers that you uh, put in the slice function. So in this case, if you said patience, then slice one comma three, uh, it's the same as saying filter, you know, patience, then filter row number equals equals one or row number equal equals three, which is also the same as saying patience, then filter row number in uh, one or three or in a vector of one comma three. And in is another infix operator, which is a way of saying if the row number has a value in any of the things on the right, call it true. So you don't have to say uh, an or value for each of these uh, different rows. You probably won't use these latter two examples at all uh, in this class, but again, I, I want you to get comfortable with uh, some of the different helper, func helper functions that exist. Uh, but the main one you'll be using is slice if you want to get back specific rows. What if you want to get back just the first row and the last row? So the first row is easy because when you slice, you can say that you want back uh, one, uh, which tells it that you want back the first row. How do you get the last row back? So if you go to the RStudio data manipulation dplyr cheat sheet and look for helper functions that have, you know, the number of rows in a data frame, uh, you'll notice that there is a helper function called n, followed by, you know, uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. And so if you wanted to get the first and last row, you could actually say patience, then slice one comma n. And what's important to note here is that you can't just write the letter n because n is not a variable, n is a function. And what n will return is the total number of rows, uh, which can be very helpful. And so just like row number, n is a helper function that can only be accessed inside of dplyr. Um, and again, the idea here is not to give you an encyclopedic knowledge of every helper function that exists within dplyr but really to familiarize you with the cheat sheet a little bit so that you can be comfortable uh, knowing that this information is all in that cheat sheet um, for when it comes time to try to, to do any of these specific things um, when you're working with a data set. Mutating is a bit of a strange term for a verb in, in working with data because I get this very vivid image that the data set is being mutated, but that's effectively what it's for. Um, you can use it for one of two purposes. You can use mutate to overwrite a variable with a different value, or you can use it to generate a new variable in a data frame. So imagine you've got this data frame patients that has the ID, disease, and age, and you want to convert this age into months. So instead of it looking like this, that where the age is the years, you want it to look more like this, where the age stands for the months. The way you'd go about doing this is using the mutate function. And so if, to convert age into months, you actually would just write patience, then mutate age equals age times 12, where the asterisk is the way that you specify uh, multiplication in R. And when you do that, you would get back um, the second data frame that has uh, age just replaced by the age in months. And so the question is, what happened to our original age variable? Have we lost all the original values because we just went and had and mutated uh, age? And the answer is no, we actually haven't lost anything yet. So if you were to reopen the patient's data frame, you'll notice that age remains unchanged in the original data frame. However, if you did want to overwrite age 
in the patient's data frame, you would need to say patients equals patients then mutate age equals age times 12. And what this tells R to do is to replace the patient's data frame with this new version of the patient's data frame where the age has been mutated to uh, refer to months rather than years. So remember that what's nice about you know working with dplyr functions in R is that you truly are just exploring data when you use these functions. It's not until you replace the original data frame uh, using the equals function uh, with the data frame on the left uh, where anything actually gets changed in the data set. So you don't have to worry that you're going to make a big mistake and you know do something that was unintentional. You pretty much can't do that unless you're actually reassigning the value of the data frame uh, using that code at the bottom. If you wanted to be more particular and take the same data frame and actually take the data frame as is, but add an additional column called age underscore MO, which stands for the age and months. You could use the same code pretty much from the last slide with the only minor change being that instead of writing age equals age times 12, you would write age underscore MO equals age times 12, such that this line reads patients, then mutate age underscore MO equals age times 12. And what that's basically telling uh, dplyr to do is it looks for a column called age underscore mo. It doesn't find one, so it basically creates one. And this is why I was saying mutate can be used to overwrite data. It can also be used to create a new variable just based on whether what you're assigning exists or not. And the other thing to notice is that when you use the mutate function, we always get back the, a data set with the same number of rows as in the original one. What if we wanted to know the mean age and median age in this data frame? We wouldn't necessarily want to use mutate because we don't want to add a column um, with those summary statistics in it necessarily. What we really just want back is the mean and median, something that looks like this. Notice that the ID is gone because we're not talking about any one individual. We're talking about a summary statistic. And similarly, the disease is gone because we, didn't, we don't know how we want to summarize disease. We only want to summarize age into its mean and median. How do we do that? Um, and the way we do that is using the summarize function. So we would use this pipe function where we would say patients, then summarize mean age equals mean parenthesis age, comma, median age equals median parenthesis age. And effectively, what that tells R to do is create these new columns, mean underscore age and median underscore age, and wipe out any of the existing columns that aren't directly referred to, which in this case is all of the columns in the, in the original data frame, such that the only columns that you return are mean underscore age and median underscore age. And importantly, notice that when we use the summarize function, we get back a data set with a single row. Uh, and not with the original number of rows as we did with mutate. So just to reiterate, mutate always returns the same number of rows as was in the original data frame. Even if there's new columns that might be added, the rows are always the same, whereas summarize returns only one row, regardless of the data frame that was put in. And so the types of functions that you use inside of a mutate uh, function are things like basic math, where you're adding and subtracting uh, two different vectors, or specific helper functions, which I'll refer to as vectorized functions, where all that means is when you give it um, a specific number of values, that function spits out the same number of values. So if I wanted to calculate uh, someone's average blood pressure, and I had three different blood pressures, I could use some basic math to take an average of the three blood pressures at a person level, uh, but that average blood pressure for each person would have the same number of values as any of the original uh, blood pressure readings for those individuals. On the other hand, summarize works with summary functions. 
things like mean, median, min, max, or n for number, which return back uh, only a single value, uh, regardless of what you put in, uh, or regardless of the size of the original data frame. And feel free to take a look at the RStudio cheat sheet for more examples.